Romans 12, 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassionate in cheerfulness. says the pitcher cries for water and the person for work that is real. The pitcher cries for water and a person for work that is real. I think the most disorienting thing about this now six month journey into COVID is that it's hard to know exactly what's real. Our lives have been upended by tiny droplets that none of us can see. They may or may not live on objects and or float through the air. If we come into contact with them, some of us will get sick and some of us will not. Some may show symptoms while others don't. It's all very elusive. We were not made for this kind of ambiguity. We were not made for standing back and waiting. We were made for doing, <clears throat> for jumping into life head first. Piercy writes, I love the people who harness themselves an ox to a heavy cart, who pull like water buffalo with massive patience, who strain in the mud and muck to move things forward and who do what has to be done again and again. I want to be with people who submerge in the task, who go into the field to harvest, to work, and to pass the bags along, who are not parlor generals or field deserters, but who move in a common rhythm when the food must come in or the fire be put out. There are fires both real and metaphoric to put out right now, but we are scarcely the people who can rush into the fields, line up side by side and do what needs to be done. No, we are the people who need to wear masks to stay six feet apart or not go outdoors at all. But we're mammals. We're meant to run in packs. The effects of too much isolation is easily recognizable. Remember that movie 
with Tom Hanks stranded on a desert island and his best friend becomes a soccer ball, like some alone time is good, but too much is deadly. Christians are incarnational people. We believe in a God who for a time dwelt in a human body, and that body drew close to other bodies. Created in God's image, we are meant to hug and to hold and to kiss and to cuddle. We are not made for keeping safe distances. We were made for eating and laughing and weeping and grieving together and praying and singing together. We were made for companioning one another closely, just as we are taught that Jesus did with his disciples. One of the first things that attracted me to this church is that it's made up of people who are willing to do. I lovingly refer to you as the Bucket Brigade. You are at your best when you are doing something together. We certainly saw that in the Pray Their Names installation. People stepped up and stepped in just at the right moment, just with the right gift to create something important, something real, something of use. And I think it came as a welcome relief to have a physical reminder that we're still capable of doing good work together. Piercy writes, the work of the world is common as mud. Botched, it smears the hands and crumbles to dust. But the thing worth doing well, the thing worth doing well has a shape that satisfies, clean and evident. Sometimes I feel like I'm busy all day long, but I haven't a clue what I've done. Days run into weeks, and it's hard to determine a shape for life that is satisfying, let alone clean or evident. No, this is not what we were made for, and yet it is where we are. What words of comfort might scripture have to offer? Our focus passage comes from the Apostle Paul, so you can count on there being an emphasis on sin and purity. Paul was preoccupied with the paradox of how to be in this world but not of it. He was a purist. His aim was for complete oneness with God. These are admirable aspirations to try, strive for perfection in all things temporal and spiritual, but I have a hunch that God might be willing to settle right now for good enough. Let's call it a good enough faith. Most of us are struggling with feelings of inadequacy. Anxiety, helplessness, and that's when you need a good enough faith. Jack Cornfield writes, if you can sit quietly after difficult news, if in a financial downturn you remain perfectly calm, if you can see your neighbors travel to fantastic places without a twinge of jealousy, if you could happily eat whatever is on your plate, if you can fall asleep after a day of running around without a pill or a drink, if you can find contentment just where you are, you're probably a dog. This is the emergency we've been preparing for, so it's time to break open the piggy bank of self-compassion. It's time to have a good enough faith. If COVID-19 refers as much to your scale as it does to the virus, it's good enough. If Trevor Noah is your only news source, it's good enough. If you haven't put on a pair of pants in a month, well, hey, it'll feel brand new to you when you do. So, your top half is dressed. 
it's good enough. Hear these words of reassurance today. We are members of the body of Christ. Thanks be to God that body has many members. And we are members of one another. Each of us, by the grace of God, given different gifts. One day you can't drag yourself out of bed. But there's somebody in the body of Christ who will take the wheel and lead us through the chaos. If for a time good enough faith even seems too much to expect, somebody in the body will hold on to hope until brighter days prevail. For the body has many members and we are members of one another. Some will teach so that others can learn. Some will offer compassion when compassion seems in scarce supply. Some need to cling tightly to their resources right now, while others are in a position to be generous. Thank God, the body has many members, and the weight of this world does not rest on any one of us alone. We are members one of the other, and here's what we were built for. We were built to help each other. As the pitcher cries for water and a person cries for work that is real, we are called to help one another get through this very hard time. And it isn't always easy being part of the body of Christ. There's an old pastor's joke that says, if we're all part of the body of Christ, somebody's got to be the ass. Maybe this is your day to feel like the ass. And that's okay. Because you're still part of the body. If all you've got today is a good enough faith, it's all right. Because God can take a good enough faith and turn it into plenty good. May the love of God bind us together and give us the strength we need to make it through just one more day, and then one more day, and then another.